Here is the famous Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric. Look at this mushroom. You may have heard the legend that Viking berserkers may have used this mushroom to create a drug-induced rage during battle. I'm not so sure that's true. It's not an anger, ragey, inducing kind of thing. That is what I want to talk about today. But bear with me because I'm going to explain the details to you from my perspective as a biologist. Viking berserkers and the fly agaric. I am here in a troll forest which is full of Amanita muscaria, these beautiful mushrooms with arguably the expert on them, especially for its practical use, Amanita dreamer. It's our second mushroom so far and there's lots of little babies popping up. She stumbled upon something that with all of our wisdom in our Western society, all but dismissed, said no. There's nothing good about that mushroom. I actually drove into the mountains to see her last year when we did a longer video specifically about the misconceptions of this mushroom. So I won't go into the full details of that here. I'll leave it down in the description and up here as a card. But what we learned from that video was that this mushroom has two main psychoactive compounds, ibotenic acid and muscimol. Ibotenic acid you can consider the upper and it's converted in the body to muscimol, which is the more calming downside. You have to understand this relationship to understand the mushroom. Amanita Dreamer has been exploring the chemistry of this with various scientists and has personally used this, I would calculate, over a thousand times in different ways and intimately knows how it works in the body. And I smoke it and it's a very spiritual experience. I hold ceremony with it that way and I use it topically for pain. I make an oil extraction, a tea, I use it raw as a stimulant, puts me in like some gamma flow state. It is so versatile. <laughs> I needed her knowledge to help me validate this Viking berserker legend. Was it a good candidate for a drug-induced rage? Let's quickly go back to some history. What was a Viking berserker? Now I'm not a historian, I'm a biologist, but I'm claiming that they did not use Amanita muscari, while as so many people seem to say they could have. So let me put this in context. Very simply, a berserker was an elite soldier that walked the lands that I'm in right now, modern Scandinavia. They were also rumored to have unique outfits. Berserker translated means bear shirt or bear shirted. The modern consensus, it, is, it was bear skin shirts. More interesting to this story, there is a description in the old texts of the berserker state. <laughs> To get a feel for what historians knew about Viking berserkers, I wanted to look at the documented material myself, so I headed to the city library in Gothenburg, Sweden. And while I now know I probably should have worn some better city clothes for the library, I was able to take a look at some of the texts which seemed to discuss the berserker state. This is what it said. It began with shivering, chattering of the teeth, and a chill in the body, and then the face would swell up and change color. With this came great hot-headedness, which at last gave into a great rage, under which they howled as wild animals, bit the edge of their shields, and cut down everything they met without discriminating between friend or foe. When this condition seized, a great doling of the mind and feebleness followed, which could last for one or several days. This is where modern scholars seem to speculate a little bit because nobody wrote that it was a drug-induced state caused by any one specific drug. That's just not how it was written about in the text. So we would have to interpret and say, well, that's not a very normal state. Maybe it was induced by something else. And because there are so many misconceptions about Amanita muscaria, people tie it to the mushroom. So I really wanted to ask Amanita Dreamer, who has the most experience that I know of anyone with this mushroom, does she see that as logical? Could she imagine this mushroom giving that state? There's very little of that that's accurate under the influence of Amanita. The giving over to that calmer side makes sense, but it doesn't make you rage or, I mean, I've done ceremonies with so many people now at high doses, and even if they get up and get trippy with it it's not an anger ragey inducing kind of thing if anything it's very focusing and and very it, it fills you full of motivation and positivity this face swelling that's just not even a thing but it it makes you hot and sweaty not cold it's it it'll make you sweaty and, and like my face will get really red mm. and i get 
fast and busy because it's a stimulant, but this whole portrayal of it just really does not match this mushroom no. at all. Not and, you at don't, all. and what about the like days of... No, if, if you take a really high... Well, you can't take a high enough dose eating it raw like that to get the ibotenic acid side. You would throw up before you could get a high enough dose that it would even still be in your body 24 hours later. You can take a dose that high, but you would have to make it as a tea and convert a lot of that ibo over so that you can get a high enough dose without the ibotenic acid making you sick to leave it in your body for 24 hours but it's your body flushes it out after that it doesn't even stick around that long i more or less thought the same thing after i did the first video on the myths of amanita muscaria and did a deep dive on it something just didn't seem right but i was willing to go along with it since everyone says this Otters, a lot of them on mushrooms. The Vikings used to take Amanita muscaria mushrooms before they went on their pillaging trips. One problem may be that people are just repeating info over and over again, yet have never tried it themselves. Plus, you have to remember that it's a bit of a chemistry problem. Ibotenic acid is an upper, but it converts to muscimol in the body, which is more of a sedative. So I asked Amanita Dreamer to explain how this works in the body. The ibotenic acid that's in it naturally, in the raw state, in the ground, yes, it's the up side, it's the stimulant side of this thing. And when you're under the influence of, of it, and when I am and others that use it, I can see that it would be a great stimulant for that purpose. But the body metabolizes it into muscimol and that's the down side of it. It goes from ibotenic acid to muscimol. It does it at different rates depending on your body and how much you ate, and it's unpredictable. And if you take a lot of it, enough to go raiding like that, the more of the ibotenic acid side, that upside you get, then that's how much of the downside you're going to get. And it could just immediately put you to sleep and then you're down. So those are the two main compounds that are in play, and I just can't see it. They weren't really those kinds of fighters but just from personal experience I this would be the last thing that you would do if you are an elite fighter like that but that still leaves the question open was this a drug induced state some people think definitely not others think there's a good candidate right in front of us known as henbane to give you some background henbane for much of the last thousand years was associated with witchcraft and honestly this seems to be the most likely candidate since the seeds were in fact found in viking graves during this period but i'll save that for a future video when i can get the seeds that i have here to grow so i can show you the whole plant what we can conclusively say though is that if you understand the biology of this mushroom like Amanita Dreamer and some of the other people who use it, it just does not seem like a good candidate for what Viking Berserkers might have used in battle. This doesn't make sense to me. So I hope that this clears things up for everyone and maybe people stop putting it in their recountings of Viking Berserkers because it just doesn't seem a likely candidate. Maybe we should look more into a better candidate for that, which is Henbane. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons who are continuing to help me and help fund people like Jonas to help me shoot this. That really helps a lot. You can do the same if you go over to patreon.com slash untamed science. Oh, one last thing. If you do have a myth or legend that seems to have some biology in it that you would like me to talk about in a future video, leave it in the comment section below because I am always looking for new ideas. All right, we'll see you in a future video. This is an incredible mushroom right here.